What have the world's archaeologists and historians been up to recently? If you're a regular viewer of our channel, you'll know that's a question we ask ourselves quite often, and we are never disappointed with the answer. There have been some remarkable and surprising discoveries made in the field of archaeology recently, and we've got the full story on all of them. Sit back, relax, and allow us to be your guide for these amazing recent archaeological finds. Those of you who own dogs know how strongly we become emotionally attached to our pets and how sad we are when they pass away. This is nothing new. A discovery made in September 2020 has proven that this close bond between humans and dogs goes back more than 8,000 years. In this Stone Age settlement of Lunkevik in Sweden, a dog's grave has been discovered after 8,400 years. Just the fact that a dog would be buried in a ceremonial manner by people living in Neolithic times is quite remarkable, but this canine, which was probably a breed akin to a greyhound, was given the additional honor of being buried with grave goods. He must have been a very good boy. This is the oldest dog grave ever found in Sweden, and the only one ever found within a Neolithic settlement. While we don't know enough about our Neolithic ancestors to stay for sure that they kept dogs as pets in the same way as we do today, there was clearly a strong relationship between humans and dogs even back then. It's rare, but not unheard of, for archaeologists to find well-preserved dinosaur eggs. Eggs sometimes fossilize, and the fossilization process allows them to survive to the modern age for us to discover. This titanosaurian egg that was discovered in Patagonia, Argentina in August 2020 is one such discovery, but it's far more significant than the average dinosaur egg find. Inside the egg is a perfectly preserved titanosaurian sauropod embryo from 80 million years ago. From this, experts have been able to identify two brand new pieces of information about this species of dinosaur. First, that they had stereoscopic vision. And secondly, that they were born with long horns on the front of their faces, but the horns disappeared as the creatures approached adulthood. Dinosaur experts are holding off on identifying the precise species because the embryo's skull differs so significantly from other titanosaurian remains found elsewhere in Patagonia that they can't yet rule out the possibility that it's a whole new subspecies. This spectacular discovery is the first ever 3D preserved embryo of a sauropod, and may yet tell us more about the species after further investigation. Archaeologists have been asking themselves what the meaning of the red glyphs on some of the walls of the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico might be for years. In September 2020, they began to ask themselves a new question. What if the glyphs are actually an ancient and unknown form of writing? If the glyphs are a form of writing and they could be translated, would that finally get us one step closer to discovering who built this mighty city? It was used by both the Aztec and the Maya, but existed before both civilizations and appears to have been burned and deliberately sacked during the 6th century. The glyphs appear all over the city, but most notably on the walls of La Ventilla. A painted mural discovered there during the 1960s shows a priest holding a book, and so it implies that the people living here in ancient times were literate. If they were literate, this might well have been their language. The walls and murals of Teotihuacan might conceivably tell us the whole story of the city from formation to destruction, but we're incapable of reading them. Perhaps someone will find the Mexican equivalent of the Rosetta Stone, that would help us out a lot. A year before archaeologists in Patagonia started to get excited about their dinosaur embryo fossil, their peers in the southwest of France were getting equally excited about the discovery of a massive dinosaur thigh bone. The bone was found by paleontologists at a site known as Angers Charente in July 2019 and measures more than six feet in length. Based on the bone's size and shape, it's believed to have belonged to a colossal type of sauropod, one that lived during the Jurassic era on Earth some 140 million years ago. 
A large pelvic bone was found nearby, although that isn't as well preserved as this thigh bone and may not necessarily come from the same dinosaur. Bones this big have a tendency to collapse in on themselves as they get older, but this thigh bone still has visible insertions of tendons and muscles and even a few scars. Experts have estimated that the full-sized sauropod would have weighed around 50 tons by extrapolating data from this single bone. Despite its gargantuan size, it wouldn't have wanted to eat you. Sauropods tend to be vegetarians. It's been a great year for dinosaur discoveries, so let's stick with the theme a little longer. In August 2020, a team of college students came across a fantastic find in South Dakota, USA. Paleontologist David Schmidt, working with a volunteer team of students from Missouri's Westminster College, identified and unearthed a massive Triceratops skull in the state's Badlands area. The skull is seven feet long and weighs an incredible 3,000 pounds. The horn of the dinosaur had been spotted protruding from the ground a year earlier by a Badlands ranger, but the ranger hadn't understood what he was looking at and didn't think to take his discovery any further until he saw Schmidt and his team fossil hunting in the area. Through their diligent work, the skull of the 66 million year old Triceratops was gradually extracted from the ground over a period of two months using shovels and pickaxes. Once it was free, the team packed it with plaster and transported it 800 miles back to Westminster College for further study. The team plans to come back next year because they believe the rest of the Triceratops may still be in the ground. Rituals and ceremonies were very important to the people of ancient Egypt. Among the many practices that went on there that would be considered strange by modern standards, mummified birds were often offered as votive offerings to the gods at temples. Ornithologists and historians have long wondered whether these were wild birds who'd been captured or whether they were specifically bred to serve this odd purpose. In September 2020, a team of French experts provided them with an answer. The birds were wild. They reached this conclusion by studying the birds' mummified remains and realizing that they represented birds of every different age and many different species. This suggests they were caught and sacrificed opportunistically, as opposed to cats, which were bred for sacrifice and were generally around the same age when they were mummified. The great Egyptian god Horus is frequently depicted as a falcon in Egyptian mythology, and so votive bird offerings were generally made to appease him, although some would also have been made to appease Thoth, who was frequently depicted as an ibis. Horus was a pretty big deal in the ancient Egyptian world, which explains why thousands of examples of mummified birds have been discovered in the country. Ice can preserve almost anything. When an object, a building, or even a living creature becomes encased in ice, the ice will keep it looking relatively fresh for thousands of years, so long as the temperature remains low enough. Check out this Ice Age bear from the Russian Arctic, for example. It still has all of its teeth and gums, and even its delicate nose is still intact. Reindeer herders discovered the bear's carcass among melting permafrost on the Lyakovsky Islands, which are found in Russia's northeastern reaches. Scientists haven't been able to provide a precise age for the animal so far, but they've estimated that it's between 20 and 40,000 years old. The species it belongs to no longer exists today, but it may be a distant relative of the modern brown bear. Dr. Lena Grigorieva of the Northeastern Federal University, which has taken ownership of the bear, says it's the only Ice Age bear ever to be found in one piece, and with all of its soft tissue still present. As more ice melts across their region, more discoveries like this could be made. In 1644, the mighty Danish warship known as the Delmenhorst was sunk in a battle at sea between Denmark and a fleet jointly owned by the Swedish and the Dutch. That was the last anyone saw of the vessel until summer 2020, when a team using the latest multi-beam sonar technology finally determined the wreck's location and went down below the surface of the water for a closer look. The ship was found in the Femarn Strait, in the west of the Baltic Sea, not far from the proposed location of an underwater tunnel that, when completed, 
will connect the island of Lalland to the north of Germany. Had the wreck not been discovered now, it might have been accidentally destroyed during that construction process. Legend has it that the Swedes were so determined to sink the Delmenhorst that they set one of their own ships on fire and crashed it into the Delmenhorst deliberately to bring it down in an early example of kamikaze tactics. The state of the cannons on the shipwreck appears to confirm that legend. They've been exposed to so much heat that they've partially melted. Bamburg Castle is a relatively well-known landmark on the coast of Northumberland in England. It's a site of some historical interest itself because it's been standing for around 800 years. What wasn't known until September 2020, though, was that the castle stands on the remains of a much older circular dwelling that's more like 2,000 years old and goes back all the way to the Roman occupation of Great Britain. A team of volunteer archaeologists performing fieldwork at the castle was responsible for the discovery, and they believe that what they found are the foundations of an ancient Roman roundhouse. 2,000 years ago, the Bamborg region was inside a military zone to the north of Hadrian's Wall and was heavily fortified to protect the Romans from advances by the Picts. The roundhouse may well have been one such fortification. What's confusing the experts is the presence of a seemingly excessive number of periwinkle shells among the foundations, suggesting that either the soldiers who were based here ate a lot of fish, or the property was actually used by fishermen and not soldiers. Paleontologists in China were celebrating a unique two-for-one discovery in August this year. They were already happy and excited to be working on a near-complete skeleton of an ancient ichthyosaur. But it didn't take them long to realize that there was more to the skeleton than they'd bargained for. Inside the belly of the giant marine reptile was another set of remains, those of another very long reptile. And they were perfectly preserved. Ichthyosaurs were mega predators of the ancient world. But based on this evidence, it seems that their eyes were sometimes too big for their stomachs. The 12-foot-long thalatosaur inside the stomach of this ichthyosaur would simply have been too large for the bigger reptile to digest, and the attempt to do so is probably what caused it to pass away. Scientists believe that this poorly judged meal decision was made around 240 million years ago, during the Triassic era. Unusually for predators, ichthyosaurs had blunt teeth, so scientists have assumed until now that they hunted for much smaller prey. Perhaps they did, and this one was the exception to the rule. The slave trade is, and was, an ancient industry, and went on almost everywhere in the world at one point in history. There was plenty of trade in slaves coming to and going from the Americas during the 19th century. And one of the relics of that lamentable period of human history was discovered in September 2020. Scientists from the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico have located the wreck of a paddle wheel steamboat off the coast of their home country. And they believe that it's the hulk of a vessel known as La Union. This was the ship that transported captured Mayans to Cuba during the so-called War of the Castes. Slavery was illegal in Mexico by the time of the war, but traders got around that by forcing captured soldiers to sign contracts that effectively did away with all their rights as individuals. On one such slave-running mission in 1861, the boilers aboard La Union exploded and caused it to sink close to the coast of Cisal in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It's an unpleasant piece of history, but it's history all the same. Quite soon, the United Kingdom will begin work on its HS2 network, a new high-speed rail system that should revolutionize transport in the country. Before the rails are laid down, archaeologists have been invited to take one last look under all the ground that the new tracks will cover. And that's how the remains of Captain Matthew Flinders were discovered in Euston, London. Flinders is a legendary figure in British history, as the commander of the HMS Investigator, he was the first European to circumnavigate Australia in 1801 and is believed to have been responsible for naming the country. The town of Flinders in Victoria, Australia is named after the British adventurer. 
He was buried at St. James Gardens in Houston when he passed away in 1814. But his headstone was moved 30 years later during expansion work on Houston train station, and his resting place was then lost and built over. When a statue was unveiled of him inside Houston train station in 2014, it was placed there as a memorial for him on the ground that nobody believed his grave would ever be found again. This was a very lucky discovery. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.